take two, Elf Gangbang. <laughs> or, uh, sorry, Ocelot's Christmas Miracle. Summary. As usual, Santa has a surprise for Ocelot. But unlike the usual, Ocelot hardly knows what it is. Santa's certain he'll enjoy it. Ocelot found himself completely naked, lying spread-eagled on a sturdy wooden table with several of Santa's elves holding his limbs in place. He had no idea why. As far as he was concerned, Santa had been behaving completely unlike himself the whole day. He'd served up a lovely breakfast for Ocelot, but hardly spared him a look beyond a curt greeting, shortly after which he trudged out of the house without any further explanation, leaving Ocelot to eat his breakfast in confused solitude. He shrugged it off at the time and gone about his business, but upon Santa's subsequent return and accompanying order for him to strip, he began to suspect that something about the whole situation was different from their usual games. Nonetheless, he'd complied and nearly instantly had been scooped up and carried out of the house and into the biting cold of the North Pole. He was all too aware that it was only Santa's magic keeping the brunt of the weather conditions from affecting him. Thankfully, it wasn't very long at all before they stepped back inside, though into an entirely separate building altogether. He took a moment to glance around, confirming his suspicions that they'd entered the elves' lodging. He'd been there several times before, often for the purpose of Santa's games and sometimes for his own. All the same, there were far too many elves in Santa's employment for him to properly know any of them. More often than not, he never saw the face, uh, uh, sorry, he never saw the same elf twice, but a few rare exceptions did exist. When they'd stepped into the building and Ocelot glanced around, it became apparent that he'd, the gathered crowd was largely made up of those exceptions. There were 12 elves surrounding them. But Ocelot didn't have a chance to take in any more details before Santa was making his way over to the large table at the center of the room. He promptly deposited Ocelot upon it and fixed him with an icy look and walked away. Before Ocelot knew it, some of the elves had stepped forward and restrained him, and that was how he found himself in what was surely one of Santa's stranger games, if not for the content, then for execution. Santa? he asked, finally letting curiosity getting the better, get the better of him. Rather than turn to answer him, Santa remained facing away as he seemingly gathered supplies from the corner of the room. You are to remain silent, Mrs. Claus, was all he said. Obeying orders, Ocelot chose to silently observe the room in an effort to anticipate Santa's plans. Unfortunately, there simply wasn't much to observe. The elves were all dressed in their pristine uniforms, expressions solemn and enigmatic as they avoided direct eye contact. I'm going to stop you right now and, like, demand that you imagine every single one of these elves as like Peter Dinklage from uh from Elf. I am. Good. So long as we're on the same page. Yeah, okay. That's also valid. I can't even lie. I have been imagining the elves from Elf while in the movie. Not even joking. Uh, can one of them be Peter Dinklage? I'm sure. Fuck it. Why not? Thank you. I think half of them are Tom Kenny. Fuck it. Fuck it. Well, yeah, that's what's going to happen. Oh, yeah. There was nothing about the room itself that gave clues to regarding what was to come, nor could Ocelot make out what Santa was doing in the corner. For all intents and purposes, Ocelot was entirely in the dark. It wasn't the first time. He'd had many surprises to contend with during his time as Santa's partner, but never before had he felt so disconcerted by the circumstances preceding him. Uh, he had no chance to ponder the matter further. Santa returned to the table and gave the elves holding down his legs a somber nod. Immediately, Ocelot had them forced open wider, much wider than he could have managed on his own. The strain at his muscles was uncomfortable, to say the least, but he'd endured much worse. Instead, he watched in interest as Santa swiftly removed his belt and folded it, then howled in shock and pain as it was brought down squarely between his legs. Give me the howl. Oh, the howl? Wait, are we... Of shock and pain. Uh... I want both. Ah! That's good. His involuntary jerking was kept at bay by the elves, their inhuman strength more than a match for his own. As soon as he went limp in their grasp, Santa brought down the belt again, then once more waited for Ocelot to go limp before repeating the process. Wait, hold on. What? The elves are super strong? Yeah. <laughs> They're like ants. They're tiny and strong. Ocelot didn't bother keeping track of how long the game went on or how many lashes he received, only knowing that somewhere along the way, his eyes had begun prickling with tears. Those tears had long since began falling in a steady stream down the sides of his face, leaving the wet skin that much more susceptible to the chill in the room. 
Santa eventually stopped, giving the elves a nod, which resulted in all of them letting him go, setting his limbs free at last. It hardly made a difference. His lower half was completely immobile, legs too numb and crotch too sore to move. He remained spread out on the table as Santa grew ever closer, then let out a whimper at the feel of a meaty hand grasping his battered dick, the touch entirely too agonizing. Audrey, give me a whimper. <laughs> Thank you. To his relief, it was soon replaced by cold wetness that provided an aching sort of pleasure. It wasn't until he felt something significantly harder begin prodding him that he re realized the applied lube hadn't simply been to relieve his pain, but to ease the way for the rod Santa was inserting into him. Colored and shaped like a candy cane, it slowly slipped inside his dick, filling him up in a way he was rarely subjected to, and all the more intense with his dick as punished as it had already been. You didn't tell me this was going to have candy cane sounding. It's in the tags. I missed that one. <laughs> Apparently satisfied with his work, Santa stepped back and waved the elves toward Ocelot. One of them instantly stepped forward, giving Ocelot the impression that the matter had been fully discussed beforehand. He blearily gazed up at the lone elf, too stimulated to take in the rest of them for the time being. He recognized the elf's build, if not his face. Tall and leaf, the sort of elf, w elf one would associate with classical fairy tales more than the preconceptions of those that worked for Santa. Okay, s yeah, they're all elf bowling except for Legolas here. At the same time, Ocelot had long ago come to the realization that elves in Santa's employ were a varied group consisting of all shapes and sizes. Ocelot is not elf racist. Regardless, the elf before him was one of the slimmer ones, cock included. Ocelot wondered if it would come out to play like it had so many times before, but to his surprise, the elf merely ran his hands over Ocelot's torso, then his thighs, before finally traveling back up to cup his balls and grip his dick. Ocelot hissed in pain. <laughs> Thank you. The, <laughs> the elf kept massaging his bruised organs for several minutes while Ocelot squirmed in place, legs still too numb to close. Fortunately, the elf stopped his ministrations before long, relinquishing his place to a second, somewhat portly elf. The second elf leaned down to kiss him, bearded lips insistent against his own, and hands heated against his face. The hands soon drifted down his chest to pinch and pull at his nipples, lips moving to his neck and clothed hips eagerly thrusting against him. Just as before, the elf relinquished his position after a handful of minutes, letting the third elf come forward for his turn. That one brought along a jar of lube, setting it across the table beside Ocelot and scooping out a liberal amount. Slathering it on and around his opening, the elf roughly worked a couple fingers in, periodically playing with the candy cane rod and fucking the inside of Ocelot's dick with it. After a while, his turn was over too, and another elf took his place. One by one, the elves came forward to pleasure him with their hands and mouths, but never their cocks. Some focused on playing with his stuffed dick. Others ran their hands over as much of him as possible. Very few strayed from his expectations. As they had their turns, Ocelot recognized each and every one of them from previous sessions. There were a couple he'd had as many as five separate sessions with, others as little as two, and the rest everywhere in between. Everywhere in between five and two. It's a, it's a lot of numbers. Some were more passionate than others, and of those, few were sufficiently skilled at it. The tenth elf, in particular, successfully rose to the challenge, brushing teasingly at Ocelot's stuffed dick with coarse fingers, rough from all the factory work Santa subjected them to. With those, <laughs> <laughs> with those same figures on the elf's other hand, confidently slid into his ass and worked him open even more than he already was. Ocelot couldn't help moaning at the expert touches. Moaning at the expert touches. Nah, bruh. Nah. Moaning at the expert touches. Moan. <sighs> Thank you. Did you want, is that what you wanted? Yes, thank you. Is that so hard? <laughs> Ocelot couldn't help moaning at the expert touches as the elf kissed him, both their facial hair lately scraping together. By the time the kiss was over, the elf's hand had left his dick, the muscled arm moving up to restrain Ocelot as another kiss was initiated. 
If Ocelot closed his eyes and focused on the feel of the body atop him, on the strength be beneath the surface, he could almost believe it was before he could finish the thought. The elf had pulled those thick fingers out of him and stepped back, gaze unrelentingly staying on Ocelot, despite the next elf having his turn. And so that elf did, soon ceding to the next. And before Ocelot knew it, the last elf was stepping away, leaving him ready and available for Santa. Rising up on his elbows, Ocelot's eyes sought the man out and spotted him in the same corner he'd started in, the only noticeable change being his thick cock freely hanging out, dripping and unattended to. It was evident that Ocelot was staring, but rather than make a biting comment about it as was his usual, Santa wordlessly approached, neatly slotting himself between Ocelot's legs and effortlessly plunging all the way into his ass. Ocelot choked back a strangled yell, <coughs> but couldn't hold back his subsequent moans that Santa's rough fucking brought forth, cock plowing him open and thrust jostling him to and fro. I'm, I see you there. I'm not moaning again. <sighs> the force set his dick into motion, making him newly aware of the rod spreading that part of him open as well. Though the area forcing his legs was still too sore from the earlier lashes, from the relentless thrusting, to be anything but excruciating, he relished it all the same. Santa's hips sped up, and he appeared to be on the verge of coming. Out of the corner of one eye, Ocelot could tell the elves were all achingly hard, and distantly wondered whether he'd be the only one deprived of an organ orgasm by the time everything was over and done with, but then Santa kissed him, preventing him from dwelling on the thought any longer. Mrs. Claus, he spoke, voice rugged with combined combination of effort and arousal. It's time I give you a gift, one I should have given you a long time ago. Ocelot hadn't yet been given permission to speak, so he remained quiet despite the newly rising sentiment that something was wholly fundamentally wrong. <laughs> Santa carried on pounding into Ocelot's ass as he continued... I hope you've enjoyed your time here. Understanding dawned on Ocelot, even as he felt Santa starting to come. Overwhelmed by his sudden realization, he barely got out a wait before he was being shushed with a kiss as the candy cane rod was pulled from his dick. Everything went blank. When he walks into the hospital room a less, little less than a week later, only to find John awake and nonchalantly sitting up in bed, the past nine years feel like nothing but a dream. No, this wasn't Grandpa Ocelot then. This was, uh, this was, this was, uh, uh, five. Boy, that's fucking weird. Yeah, I was imagining Grandpa Taint this whole time. Oh, I guess it was sexy Ocelot then. Well, that's disappointing. 